Hi friends, it's Yuris here and welcome to Tattoo Shop Talk, weekly web show about tattoo related stuff, tips, tricks, tutorials, interviews and things of that nature. And if it's a thing for you, then consider pushing that beautiful subscribe button. And today we'll do a little look into, or you can call it tutorial for very beginners for Procreate on iPads Pro iPad Pro is this beautiful device that you can see often in tattoo shops with the Apple Pencil situation sticking out, so it means it's charging. People have been busy. And the most popular app for tattooists, at least the ones I know, is an app called Procreate. There's also other apps like Sketchbook and many more, and you can check my previous video about device itself. And in the comment section you can find many apps mentioned by you people, and they are both for iPads and Android devices, but I'll talk about Procreate this time, because Procreate is the app that I use personally and most of the tattooists around me use, and that was also the reason why I chose it, because I can always ask for an advice and exchange sort of experience. A little note here, if you're looking for videos on how to create awesome artworks and things of that nature, then this is not for you. This will be a video about very beginnings, or maybe you just bought the iPad and you want to understand how that thing works, or you just consider buying it and you don't have much experience with digital artwork creation. So this will be very basic explanation on what is what. Let's jump into Procreate. Once you open Procreate, you get a screen like this, which is called Gallery, and this is all your artworks that you have made and haven't deleted. And if you tap a plus button, there's options where you can choose a new sheet, there's a pre-made sizes and you can make custom ones. Most popular is A4, you can get A3, you can make custom ones if it's for specifics of your work, but considering that in the shop you have a printer with A4 or A3, so that would be most common size to use for tattoo design. Let's do A4, so we tap it here and it opens up. So this is your sheet. If you want to zoom out or zoom in, you can just pinch your screen and do that. Here's a selection of brushes. I use only a few of them. For sketching, I just use one of the pencils and here you can choose color of it. If you want to look more into what's there, you can tap on a brush and then there's the different things you can adjust opacity, pressure and all that sort of stuff. I would recommend to play around with different brushes because there's different things that can affect it. And what's cool with this device in combination with this Apple Pencil is that it works as a pencil and you can try different angles and see what changes then. You can also try different pressures so it's darker, lighter and that's the beauty of this product. I have looked at many reviews and all the internet says that nothing can beat this pen at the moment. That's one of the reasons to go with iPad Pro. If you want to undo stuff, there's a button back or the cooler stuff that you might have seen your colleagues doing or something is tap with two fingers and it also undoes the thing. If you tap it with three, it redoes the thing. If you hold it, it does the whole thing backwards. And if you hold it with three, it redoes it. Next thing here is the little finger situation and that would be the smudging thing. That's like that thing that you smudge on the paper and pretend that you are master of smooth shading. Next thing is eraser. And erasers work the same like brushes, so there's different shapes and sizes. And next thing is layers. And layers is the most important thing if you haven't done any digital stuff. Because once you understand layers, you understand the rest of the thing. Layers would be like those transparent sheets of paper that you design your stuff on. So you can do one layer and then you put next sheet over it and trace through that. And then you put next one and trace through that. So layers would be like those different sheets of tracing paper. Only they are all stacked in this device, which is super useful and saves a lot of space and paper. As for brushes, I use pencil and I use from inking section studio pen and you can click on that and you can play around with all sorts of settings. Some people like them going all flowy and crazy. There's settings like streamline where you can make it very basic as you pull it. That's the way it goes or you can add it more and then iPad will help you and make it more smooth and you'll look more professional with your drawing skills. If you want to change colors, you tap this little last round circle thing and you can choose colors here from the circle and then you can make them brighter, 
less saturated, darker. So if you want to do what all the cool kids do, you can start with, let's say, red. Take a pencil, do some sort of rough thing there. Then you can take something like blue, because that was a popular thing to do. Add another layer, do like a more precise version of it and do another one and maybe go over with your pen thing and make one of the final versions. Take your pen, make it black and go over. On this side here you can change size of it and opacity. You can work with what works best for you. And here you can tap and make layers visible, back on and back off. With this app it's pretty cool and with every update it gets better. But I'll show some tricks what works really nice and why this device and this app is super useful for. For example we have our pen chosen, so you draw a line, draw another one. But if you want to make a straight line, you just drag it and hold on to it and bam, it's there. Now with the last update they included shapes. Back in the days the best option would be to have saved circle as an image and once you need it you can pull it on a screen and use that as your circle shape. Or you can make a brush that it's made from circles and there's a really cool tutorial about that. Have a look for that tutorial, it explains how to do it with different shapes. For example here you can change size. So boom, a circle, you want to resize it, resize it. What's useful with this particular brush is that if you're one of those people who like to draw all the dangly stuff on mandalas or you like to draw like animals with some jewelry, it's pretty useful then because as you can see, you can have your pearl situation going crazy. Since last update, you draw a circle, you hold on to it, boom. It's some sort of circular smooth shape, but it's not circle enough. But the trick is here, do this, bump, it smoothens it out, tap on the screen, and you have a perfect circle. If you want to draw other shapes, boom, triangle, smooth, perfect, rectangle, boom, smooth, bam, rectangle. And if you want to draw curvy shapes, you draw a curve, hold on to bam and you can change the size length and all that stuff pretty cool if you want to color them in just tap on a color circle and pull it in there bam it's colored in you want a different color take that one bam simple tricks yeah once you open your layer menu you can tap on them and here opens a menu if you if you're working on some big projects you can rename them select them Mask, alpha lock, but that's a whole different story. You can merge them, combine them, you can invert it, which is a new thing as well. Back in the days, if you wanted to invert stuff, you had to go in uh, levels and switch them around, which is a different menu that we'll get to in a moment. And also, if you swipe to the right, you can delete layer, duplicate layer or lock layer. One thing out of all this madness, which is not too advanced, would be alpha lock. Because if you alpha lock this thing and then you want to do something else on it, choose like a different marker or something, then once you draw it, it will draw only on objects on that layer, which can be useful every now and then. Also the brush that is made of circles can be made from any other shapes. So like I said, look up that tutorial and go crazy with your imagination. I have made some brushes here from scale-like shapes. You have a snake-like scales it's not very useful you can just color in like the whole snake but it can be used as a reference and like that little trick with the making straight lines you can do that with the shape and you can adjust the shape and now play around with it a bit we will transform it so we have to go in this arrow shape you can make it bigger smaller you can turn it around by holding this thing or you can use your fingers on a the screen there's a free form and there's magnetic step if you untap it then it gives you more freedom in on all sorts of positions and shaping and sizing if you put magnetic then it sort of snaps to the places you can flip it one way another you can rotate it and all that stuff but the fun stuff starts here with warping things and then you can adjust it to some shapes that you want to 
and that can be helpful with this particular scaly situation if you want to draw some snake or something and figure out which way things should go. Like I said, you can't do the whole thing, but it could be a nice reference point. Here is a selection. Say there's a rough daggery shape and with the selection tool you can draw around it and once you connect those bits you have selected it then you can in invert selection or you can duplicate selection and it shows in the layers or if you want to select part of it just tap on selection tool you can just tap on things like boom 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 and let's say i want to stretch it or shrink that part i can so i can do that thing i can undo magnetics and just do do it like that and put it in position. If you have trouble to get it right in a position, you can just tap on sides and it will move it pixel by pixel, which is often useful. You can rotate it. Sometimes you want to flip things and match them. So that's where the tapping could be useful. So, cause it doesn't always snap as you want it to. Then we have opacity which is very useful so let's say you draw this thing in black but you want to refine it you put another layer and if you draw on that one the thing is same color and you can't see which is what especially if the bottom layer is darker so then we're going to bottom layer tapping here and putting opacity down so it becomes lighter and then we go back to the next layer that's one thing is not to forget on which layer you on because you can spend a lot of time doing things that you should do on different layer but if you do on the same one you wasted a lot of time so now we're on a new layer and even if it's the same color we go over it and you can see what's going on hold on to it it straightens the line boom but let's say i want to make a dagger and i want to make it super symmetrical then we are going to the next menu which is this wrench thing you can insert photos if you want to work with photos or some reference pictures or things of that nature. But the fun part is here, canvas. You push on canvas and then you switch on drawing guide. You go into edit drawing guide. So most useful would be symmetry here. And symmetry can be vertical, horizontal, quadrant, radial. This time we'll use this one, vertical one. So we can either position the dagger on the center or from here we can put center on the center of dagger zoom in a bit done tap on layer and it shows that it's assisted if you tap on it here it shows the drawing assist if you want to switch it off you can switch it off or you can just make a new layer and work further let's say that i know what's going on and i want to go with the pen over it by holding and dragging them you can reposition layers we'll make lighter this one make assisted we have chosen our pen boom and it mirrors the image on both sides it will be super symmetrical be careful with the middle because things can get funky and it doesn't matter which side you draw on things will mirror no matter what and this part i want to switch assistant off or make a new layer i like to make new layers because then i can always go back to that layer and add some changes if necessary so i'll add new layer and i'll do these things here switch the bottom layer off and we have some sort of a dagger so here you go a little cute dagger thing and another thing in the wrench menu is this little camera thing where you can check time lapse of your design process if you want to post it on your social media or just show it off to your friends. So you can press time lapse replay and it shows everything what you've done. Boom, 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 boom. And the last thing you want to do, you go in this little wrench, share. You can share it as a PSD which would work with Photoshop or if you have your design ready and you have the final option let's say we want to get this thing out then we go in this menu press share and we can export it as JPEG for example because that would all open on any computer press JPEG and then you can send it to your works computer with like email Gmail 
messenger you can put it on your drive or if you have option to print wirelessly you can print it wirelessly from your device but then perfect sizing can be a bit of an issue but if you got this far you'll find a way so that would be very basics like i said it's just rough, rough explanations what tools are there how layers work it's not about creating awesome artwork because there's other people who make those tutorials and they very good with that ipad is a very useful tool if you want to make quick walk-in designs you can use it if you want to add a dash of custom to all those pinterest designs that you see every day if you're into some custom lettering you can layer stuff and do that stuff and there's a lot of different types of pens and brushes that you can use you can trace stuff you can if you want to shamelessly copy stuff this is perfect tool for that if you want to copy and customize stuff if you want to trace some references this is perfect tool one thing i want to mention that procreate is wonderful app and ipad pro is wonderful tool but you need some extras ipad itself obviously it doesn't come with this pen which is very important part of it just having ipad without this is, is really no point if you work in a tattooing so one thing you need is this pen next thing would be accessories and i like these type of covers where you can place your pen on the side here and it's not going to get lost you can also use this cover as a support if you want to place it one way or another way in this sort of position it even have a holder for your pencil apple pencil i've seen on some tutorials that people use like a matte co cover for screen it's not only used as a screen protector but it also it makes it a bit smoother and it makes even that pencil like sound with this type of screen hand sometimes tends to stick to it and with that type of screen protectors that issue should be sorted but i'm scared to put something on the screen i'm not entirely sure how it's going to work and how it's going to interfere with the pencil and all you can also buy all, all sorts of like grips for pens which makes it bulkier if you wanted that tattoo grip feel i'm not using those because i don't feel like i need one and also then you can't store it here then also you can't charge it so easily so it have to hang down over some side because this part would be bulkier and it will sort of push on this connector and also my colleague had an issue when it rolled off the table and then it makes it sort of tip heavier and it landed with this very important part down and it just destroyed the pencil and that's like 100 euros down the drain and last thing i would like to mention is chargers because it comes with one of these type of chargers and it takes forever to charge ipad especially the big size the 12.9 inch one and you can get pretty cheap on amazon some sort of power bricks this one is not the strongest one out there but there are plenty to choose from and there's also for new ipads with usb-c connectors but this little investment improves situation by a lot it costs around 15 to 30 euros depending on how strong you choose it but it will charge your device a lot quicker from all the reviews i looked into it nobody had any issues or malfunctioning and then it saves you quite a bit of money because you don't have to buy the very expensive one from apple and these little ones are crap for device this size so that would be one thing i would recommend to look into it i'll put links in description to this charger i hope this made some things clear about procreate how it works with the last update and what useful things are there maybe this will help you in your choices when you're considering do you want an ipad for your work with tattoos or any other type of creative ways of your self-expression procreate is the app i feel familiar at the moment i also try to work with sketchbook which seems pretty similar there's just a bit different layout of tools if you're more into this mandala type things there's also a free app like amaziograph which creates these crazy patterns it actually don't have to be only for mandala type designs if you want to make super symmetrical flower type things or some cherry blossoms it's pretty useful to make it there because then you're sure that it's going to be perfect there's a lot of choices out there let me know if there's anything i should look more into if you have more tips let me and everyone else know that in comment section as well and like always if you like the video press like button if you didn't like i'm sorry if you want to see more videos like this then press that subscribe button thank you all for watching and i'll see you in next episode goodbye